So what do you think happened to our golf cart while we're in this state now? What do you think the future's gonna hold for it? You're gonna have to find out. So here we have it. Well, it's our last major fabrication job for the golf cart. So what we've done so far is we've removed the leaf springs. As you can see, they ran from here to where those bolts are down there. So we've pulled them out. We've cut the bumper off. We'll tidy that up properly later. As you can see here, reason being, you can clearly see that it was gonna hit the steering. Now that it's gonna be really low. The other thing we've done is we've cut this post off here. Cause obviously it would have failed on the tire. So removed all of that. So this setup's still gotta come up a lot further, but nonetheless, you'll see it later on at the end of this video, how we managed to figure it all out. So let's go make some control arms. So we're about to make the lower control arms now, and you've probably already got an idea how we're gonna be making them, and I guarantee you what you're thinking is literally how we're gonna be doing it. So as you can see, we've got our weld on bungs with our rose joints in them. So all we're gonna be doing is connecting the dots, cut a bit of tube, weld them on, job done. Throw them back in the cart, and then we can make a shock mount wherever it lands on this, pull it back out, weld a shock mount on there, and that's basically it. So here goes the factory leaf spring perch there. So we're gonna be making some tabs off this as well to hold that in there. And then to make up the difference, we're gonna be making up some aluminum bushes or something or whatever we got lying around to make up the difference. So picture that with some tabs coming up over here like that. That will sit in the middle. We'll have two spaces either side. And then that way there you can move freely how it needs to go. So let's start cutting some tube and welding it all up. As you can see, they're all welded on now. All makes sense, I guarantee it's exactly what you all envisioned. So what we need to do now is make up four hangers so we can mount them into the cart. So picture, we're gonna use the bolt hole spacing that's already on the cart. Save mucking around on the front axle and on the body. And then we just need to make some sides to hold this in and some spaces to make up the difference and that can't go nowhere. So let's make something up. Here we have the front end all completed now. All our arms are all in and stuff. We've also mounted the master cylinders up over here. So once we pull it apart, we'll actually be drilling a hole down there so these hoses can run underneath, come out that way there. Got well, our shocks all mounted. So yeah, it's basically all that type of stuff done now. So now we can move on to the rest of the cart. So what we're up to now, we're gonna be remaking the two wastegate pipes again. So we'll cut up the old ones because it's too expensive to keep buying these bins. Just gotta deburr them on the inside now. And good to go, so we'll quickly weld that up. Wastegate pipes back in now. Just gotta fully weld it out. Exact same design as last time, just a little bit more refined. Still maintaining the same angles everywhere. Likewise there. Thanks to the laser, it makes everything a lot quicker. And you may remember what we spoke about a while ago, having that inclusive 90 degree angle. So we can add a bit of symmetry because obviously we don't have two wastegates to balance the rear up. So therefore, the only way we could add symmetry well, I thought was by making the angle there 90 degrees. So there we have it, all done. So what we're gonna be doing later on, probably not right now, but later on, maybe on this video, we're gonna make the second wastegate pipe. So that one will dump down the back over here. Reason being is if you've ever ridden a turbocharged motorcycle with an external wastegate, you'll know that if you have the wastegate exit with the exhaust, obviously you can't hear it. It all just blends in and sounds exactly the same. So therefore we want to make that second one for when doing burnouts and stuff to dump out the front there so you can differentiate the sound between yeah, the wastegate and the exhaust so it should sound good when it's um, banging on the limiter. So another small job we're going to be doing is making up a little bracket to secure these. So I found a bit of square stock here so we'll drill a hole and make a little billet bracket. You don't have a mill or cat skills, bring it back old school, got to think outside the square. There's our little clamp all done, pretty happy with how it turned out. Probably one of my most favorite parts of the cart now, I think because it was so simple. There's a lot of detail and it just all makes sense once it's all on there. So as you can see, looks like it's been done on a CNC, but it's all just been, been done by hand with basic hand tools as you've seen. So we've machined this little spacer up here. And it's got an M6 thread going through, so obviously that way there we can clamp down on it. And then we're gonna attach it to the valve cover coming through the backside. So we'll roughly assemble it on the cart and it'll all make sense. Here it is, so what we're going to do obviously as I mentioned before, we're going to come through the other side on the other cam covers, drill a hole, 
with a machine set screw so it's nice and flush that's how we're going to attach it but there it is keeps everything nice and symmetrical good clearance everywhere very happy with that little job so let's move on to mounting this rear body what we're doing is finishing off all the small odd jobs like the lower exhaust mount doesn't really need one as such but it's just a great way to quickly help centralize the whole system being on v-bands it takes a while trying to line everything up so just made a simple little bracket there that goes in there with the riv nut well done to the exhaust lower mount there done and that one up there is done as well so as you can see it's literally bent like that on purpose and also twisted out this way so with the V-Rod motor, it's not like a normal car where you can bolt your manifold up to a mating surface, like a hard surface. They always pivot and rotate for obvious reasons, being a motorcycle engine. So therefore we have eight pivot points. So we've got one, two, three, four, two on the turbo, two on the wastegate. So it's eight in total. So these mounts I've done, the more so an alignment tool for me. So now I can just quickly put it all on. Everything's gonna be aligned up, good to go. So that's all that side of the thing's done. Look pretty cool, we've got the body on as well as the rear seat now. So we've got mounts up underneath here, we've got some holding the side flares on and the rear bumper, some more up the back there to hold the rear bumper on, she's rock solid, kick worthy if you will. Um, yeah, the body's all crack, going to be a lot of work trying to get all the body sorted. As for this, we've got it directly to the chassis rail, we've had to move everything in, shift everything in, um, what else have we done? I've made up spaces and bits and pieces. So what we need to do for the rear end to finish this off, we need to do some sheet metal on the back there. But we're going to do the windscreen first, get that out of the way, and then we'll come back to the sheet metal and we'll leave that to last. We now have a windscreen frame, real simple setup. So we've got our staunchings that were welded directly into the factory points there. A little bit rusty so the welds are a little bit manky, but no doubt we can grind them up and do a nice little run over top once we split the whole thing apart. So yeah, real simple setup. As you can see, we've got the staunches in there. We've made the frame, that slid down onto them. And then we've actually put some rivet nuts in the staunches. So therefore we didn't have to have any nuts protruding on the outside here. So yeah, real simple setup. The reason why the box section is so big, as I say, I had to slide over some more box section there. So pretty happy with that. It looks pretty nice with the body on it. So I think we're nearly at a stage now. We can start pulling this whole golf cart apart, really. Um, yeah, we've got to jump back on the back and sort out that sheet metal there. But apart from that, we're nearly done. So yeah, have a look at that. Looks like a little off-road buggy, eh, with all that front exposed. There we have it. Here's the vernier to scribe out our body shape. So then we have the exact same measurement right past there. So we've got a nice little lip. Here's a fine line tape to define the border. So we've got a cut from there outwards. So obviously all that's cut, getting cut out. We made a little template up. Should've worked out quite well something like that obviously it'll be a lot more finesse than this but you get the idea so that should tidy it up nicely and the reason why i wanted that little lip there is so this will end up being attached to the chassis rail and slid up underneath that lip there that way there we don't need to try and like make like a 90 degree lip on the top of that or have it mounted to the plastic with a little bit there so this looks a little bit nice and a little bit more finished it's the last thing we've got to do so start cutting bits and pieces out and should hopefully see soon a little um, template in there while well, some steel. Use our grinder to cut out their shape. So what we'll do now is basically just get a bit of steel, slide it up underneath there, trace their shape, cut it out, and in theory, that should be it. A chicken scratch going on, so we'll cut this one out and see how well it fits. So we're done with the cart now. We can pull it all apart. As you can see, we made up our panels there. So this is the second time ever using the bead roller. We've done a practice panel. I've already thrown it out. Sorry. Might have seen it on Instagram, and there goes the mirror image on that side there. Um, so they're not perfect, but they'll do for the golf cart, and it's better than having flat panels there. So overall, pretty happy with that. It. It's sort of given the vision I was intending for it. I wanted to box it all in so you can see the focal point, which is the exhaust. It's literally like a piece of art. So that way there, get rid of all the distractions. Still ample clearance for the axle and stuff. So yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. So what we're gonna do now is, yeah, literally just pull it apart, and then we're gonna finish off a few other bits and pieces, flip the chassis upside down, add some bracings, bits and pieces, we've spoken about it many a times, but there we have it. So next video, you'll probably see the whole golf cart pulled apart. All that's left on it is the motor, obviously, and the flooring. So we can't take the flooring out for obvious reasons. We remove that strip, what's gonna happen? That thing's gonna flip off. So we need to um, pull the motor out, drill all the rivets out, pull the flooring off, load her onto the back of the truck and then start getting the chassis all sorted out. 
and that's not even all the parts so here's a lot of the parts anyhow I think about it, everything's been hand made so we might quickly talk through things and what we've made and what we've done so we'll start with the front axle we had to modify the rack uh, remount that um, we've got our new shock mounts down there and we added a bit of camber to the front wheels then we've got our front lower control arms we made all adjustable here's for the shocks we've um, adjusted the bump stops in there handmade that it's our shift lever obviously with our bushings in there we now have it's our space we have to make up for our drive by wire pedal we've all seen the brakes series 1 rx7 brakes and calipers there's the mount turbo drain there obviously made the pedals from complete scratch utilizing the factory um, golf cart pedal pad this is actually the accelerator one we cut in half so we got two pads out of it that was the damaged bent and twisted oil cooler from a v-rod it was the crash one we brought so straighten that out and we made that made the radiator from scratch twin pass two little spell fans on the back and then we have our fuel tank so our regulator obviously our return goes down the bottom there got the factory v-rod hanger and sender unit we got a catch can a like a basically like a separator air oil separator that's the style we've gone for it so it's all enclosed we have our overflow for our radiator to move on to our plenum we all made that by hand likewise with the air rise setup we've all seen dash mount for the Haltech drive-by wire adapter those are our obviously our water lines thermoset housing water pump housing drive-by wire the little adapter we made for the front air ride moving over here we have the frame for the windscreen and then we have all the pipes and bits and pieces little manifold we made adapters for the breather to the factory v-rod block just heats are working here move on to our wiring our little panels we made up for the engine bay side of things rear engine mount here so these panels here this is the third time ever using the b roller We've done that one test panel as you may have seen and then we've got these two here move on to the rx8 lsd diff we got in there all the tube work self-explanatory and we got our bus bars there battery box holder well not battery box holder the battery holder um relay holder obviously all the wiring it's a lot there eh, when you bunched up with the relays and yeah so that's majority of the stuff we saw heaps more parts not in this video i've just already stored them away so yeah and then we'll have a look at where the card is so so we can get this all in frame try and not trip over so there we have it all stripped out so this will be the end of this video um yeah it's been been a lot of fun making all this stuff but yeah it's um definitely taking a toll that's for sure especially home life and stuff so there we have it next time you see this card it should be all painted black not going to record the next part it's about strengthening the chassis adding a few gussets notching and a few other bits and pieces so once it's all painted up as you'll see next thing we'll be doing is making a floor new firewall and then everything else start going back onto the cart so there we have it been a lot of hard work hundreds of hours that's all i can say so i hope you've all enjoyed the rebuild of this little golf cart done with the cart until this didn't realize there's so much rust all through it in the, these areas here so we had to cut it all off so we had to put some new outer rails on it then it'll be ready for powder coat and paint got to see these ugly rusty things off so as you can see those are the areas we had to cut it off and had to linish them so we need to put a bit of protection on use some of this stuff a bit of weld through so now we can weld our new rails on that we just cut out and we're definitely all done this time so as you can see our new rails are in and a few other bits and pieces you can see our notch down in here so we'll use a bit of box section to do that so next up for this is to drop it off to get powder coated um, powder coat all the other bits and pieces all these so we've got to disassemble everything and do a big load drop them all off so this will literally be the last video of the cart on the rebuild side so the next step will be basically assembling it but yeah i probably won't do heats a little series because we gotta do is put it back together just like lego now so all the hard work's done 
time to uh, get it all in some color and then assemble it. So I hope you guys all enjoyed it. <laughs>